Hello, welcome to The Biblical Perspective, an in-depth expositional study in the Word of God. Hello and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to this presentation of the Biblical Perspective Bible Study. We're so very glad that you've joined us and we pray that our study in the Word of God tonight will be a blessing to you. I'm joined again for this study uh, by Minister Gwendolyn Holmes, the First Lady of Emmanuel. Our topic of discussion tonight is Judging Other Believers. Minister Gwen will now get us started by reading the text for our discussion. Our text for tonight's study is coming from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. Now, accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions. One person has faith that he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats vegetables only. The one who eats is not to regard with contempt the one who does not eat, and the one who does not eat is not to judge the one who eats, for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge the servant of another? To his own master he stands or falls, and he will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. Thank you, Minister. You're welcome. By way of introduction to this study, let's start this way. In chapter 14 of the book of Romans, as we continue in our book study, the Apostle Paul changes the conversation from the believer's conduct in civil matters where he instructed them how they should relate to governmental authorities and governmental agencies. He now addresses their conduct toward other believers in matters of religion. Instruction is given about how to deal with discord that is certain to arise in any local church fellowship. The church is told how to maintain peace, mm -hmm. how to maintain harmony, and how to ensure the acceptance of all members regardless of their points of view on certain matters. Now, the church at Rome was very interesting. In this capital city, uh, it was populated by both Jews who had come to Christ and by Gentiles who had come to Christ. And these individuals from these various backgrounds had different views about what was right worship and what was proper sacredness and the handling of uh, everyday things in life. It was natural mm -hmm. that disputes would arise with opposing parties feeling that their point of view was the right point of view. In cases where the scriptures, where the teachings of Christ or the apostles' doctrine was clear on a subject, any dispute that arose was easy to settle. Mm -hmm. All they had to do was just say, what does the word say? Yes. What did Jesus teach? What has the apostle said? It was clear if it was uh, already a doctrine they had. The difficulty came because not every point of view, not every disagreement was addressed by known doctrine or by taught doctrine. This can still be a problem in church today. Even though we have the whole Bible, mm -hmm. there are people that's going to take different points of view. Yes. Now, here's what we need to know about the Bible. And a lot of people really don't understand this. Mm -hmm. The Bible covers everything we will deal with in life. Wow. In one of two ways. Either by precept, which is a law, thou shalt not kill. That's law. Mm -hmm. Or by principle, which is a general rule. And yes. I believe it might be in the next part of this presentation where we deal with this general rule. 
But there's a scripture, and I'm quoting loosely the King James Version, mm -hmm. to give you a principle that covers things not covered by law in scripture. There's a scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 that says, It is neither good to eat meat, yes. nor to drink wine, mm -hmm. nor to do anything, anything that causes my brother to stumble, hinders him, or makes him weak. Yes. Now that's not a law, mm -hmm. but that's a principle. That's a general rule. Mm -hmm. That will mean that under certain circumstances, we as believers should not do certain things, right. although not strictly forbidden in the scriptures. We should refrain. Refrain. Mm -hmm. Good word. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's talk about some of the uh, 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 problems that might come up in a congregation. Some individuals, some churches and some religious denominations take positions of legalism mm -hmm. that condemn a whole lot of stuff that the Bible didn't say anything about. <laughs> they, they, make, they, they say everything is wrong, almost, except Jesus. Yes. Okay? And a lot of that's not biblical. That's called legalism mm -hmm. because they are condemning things not essential to Christianity mm -hmm. and not essential to Christian living. Mm -hmm. Other individuals in churches and denominations are so liberal, mm -hmm. and some would use the word loose, mm -hmm. that they condone things that can be harmful to Christians. Yes. They don't find anything wrong with hardly anything. Right. And that can be a problem. <laughs> yes. Condone. Because then they're going to find themselves violating principles that harm other people, mm -hmm. even if they're not condemned in the Bible. In this study that we embarked upon tonight, the Apostle Paul is teaching Christian principles that deals with issues neither condemned nor condoned. I repeat, Paul is dealing with issues in the yes. church yes. neither condemned nor condoned by God. Mm -hmm. And we need to take a look at this. Minister, I'd like for you to get started with the presentation. Would you be so kind? Certainly. In the verses of our lesson, Paul is emphasizing the need for members in the church to be accepting of others who hold different points of view than their own with regard to how they should live. That means after you become a Christian, right. how you should live. It was the apostles desire that the church at Rome maintain unity and peace hmm. in the fellowship. Hmm. He had expressed this same concern to other local congregations. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3 in the New International Version of the Bible states it this way. I am reading Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 3. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Yes. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Hmm. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Yes. Colossians 3, 14 in the NIV says, and over all these virtues put on love, hmm. which binds them all together in perfect unity. The instruction was directed to mature believers. Mm -hmm. Paul starts talking to those who've been in the faith Yes. Who, have, who have a little better understanding yes. of the do's and don'ts of Christian living. Yes. And in the church today, the mature believers are the ones who should have the patience mm -hmm. and the acceptance of others who don't quite yet understand what they should understand. One of the worst things that can happen in a church yes. is that the mature believers start condemning the new converts because they don't quite do everything right. The young lady might not wear what the older saints feel is appropriate to church. The young man might still be uh, doing things during the week mm -hmm. that he hasn't yet learned that should be left alone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not outright sin in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so patience is needed and wisdom is needed and should be applied. 
by the mature believers. So that's who Paul is addressing these first verses to, yes. to mature believers in the fellowship who would have a better understanding of issues related to Christianity. I believe that the scripture minister somewhere that says the strong should bear the infirmities of the weak. Mm -hmm. So yes. mature believers have a greater responsibility in these issues. Uh, the reference to the weak in faith is not about believers who still have a limited, I'm sorry, is about believers rather, who still have a limited understanding of the full truth of the gospel. Mm -hmm. They just got to Christ. They don't know a lot yet. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, not knowing what was permissible behavior in believers. Mm -hmm. So while God is being patient with these people, the church, especially mature believers, need to be patient with these people. Right. And, and you know, if I can interject, Pastor, that is one of the purposes and the beauty yes. of discipleship Absolutely. programs in the church. Absolutely. Because it's, it's like a mentoring. Right. And the new believer would have someone to walk with them yes. as they're learning to walk with Christ. Right. It's one thing to say, walk with Christ. Right. But it's another thing to have somebody as a model. Right. And, and Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. That's discipleship. That's discipleship. A disciple, by definition, mm -hmm. I don't want to interrupt you, I, no, but I want to interject without <laughs> interrupting. A disciple yeah. is a follower. Yes, and a learner. And a learner. So yes. discipleship is about somebody leading who's mature, mm -hmm. somebody following and learning who's not yet mature, and that's why every church needs a discipleship program. Right, and the idea behind that is that the one leading the one who's following is to be mature. Yes. And their faith has been tested. Yes. They, they may not even have been in the church an awful long time, right. but they may be rooted and grounded in the word of God. Yes. And they may have had the testing of their faith and the trying of their faith and the trials, and they may have come through right. as mature and worthy yes. of leading someone in the faith. They may have gotten Ephesians 4, 1 through 3, especially verse 2, I think, personally. Yes. It should be right behind John 3, 16. Yes. <laughs> For God so loved the world. And then the next part we should learn is be completely humble and gentle. And gentle. And patient. Yes. Bearing with one another in love. That's a tough thing. That's a tall act. It is. You know. It is. It is. But necessary. Well, that's excellent, Minister. Thank you for that. Yes. Uh, Mature believers mm -hmm. are told to accept, without being critical, wow. those who still lack spiritual maturity. Someone, uh, I, I, this keeps coming to mind, so I'm going to interject it here about uh, yes. church. Yes. Uh, uh, since I've been on Facebook, a lot of things are interesting. A lot of them are not. A lot of them are good. Uh, most of them are not. But one thing I saw on Facebook, that was a picture of a young lady uh, with a dress on that you wouldn't think would be Sunday morning attire. Yes. And someone asked, if she goes to church, should she be let in? Mm. And there were various opinions about this young lady who was a beautiful lady, but with a dress on much too revealing mm -hmm. and probably would be somewhat distracting. Mm -hmm. But would you turn her away from church? No. Mm -hmm. Church is where she needs to be. Mm -hmm. And when she came to church, she should be loved and embraced Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, maybe what's probably going to happen is uh, one of those uh, cr cr nice Christian sisters mm -hmm. with a beautiful Sunday scarf on mm -hmm. is going to go by her seat mm -hmm. and drape this scarf over her knee and say, darling, you're beautiful, but this might help the men not get distracted. Mm -hmm. I've seen that, that happen, a nice way to and I've it. seen it accepted, but I've also seen it done the wrong way, mm -hmm. and people offended and run away from church. So we really got to think about how we're going to treat people that don't yet understand what we want to understand, yet they come, they're coming to Jesus, uh, yet they're coming to church. Yes. So humility, kindness, and patience, as Paul was admonishing yes. in a letter, is so very important, especially for the mature. Right. And you know, Pastor, we forget often when we are in the church and we feel that we are mature Christians, but we forget that we were there. Yes. We might didn't wear the short dress, but we wore something else. 
we did something else. Yes. Okay. Right. So we shouldn't be hypocritical. Right. That's even worse. Absolutely. To be hypocritical. But Proverbs 4, 7, in all thy getting, get an understanding. understanding. Yes. So we need to understand how to relate to people. Yes. How to receive yes. those that were outside of Christ or still may be outside of Christ. Right. A lot of times it takes the the weight of the world that they feel yes. to come into a church door. Yes. And so yes. then we shouldn't put more weight on their shoulders. Right. You Absolutely. See? Absolutely. Because what we want them to see is Christ in us. Yes. Not us. Absolutely. Over Christ. Right. That's but good. Christ in us. So many people when they come to church, they are carrying these loaves, carrying burdens. They've been a lot of times criticized and put down by their families. So we shouldn't join that crowd. No. Amen. Amen. You know. So Paul starts this chapter by saying, accept them. We are to accept them without criticism. Now, the Greek word for accept is interesting. Yes. The Greek word for accept is proslambano. Mm -hmm. And it means, listen, I take to myself. Wait a minute. I'm going to take this person into my loving company. I'm going to take them. I take to myself. This is the literal Greek definition of accept. Mm -hmm. I welcome. Mm -hmm. Do we make everybody that comes to church feel welcome, even if they seem different, even if they are not dressed appropriate? Yeah. Even if uh, one time we had a guy come in that had the scent of the wine of the of the bum, the street scent on him. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if you touch him, you're going to get that on you. I hugged him. Mm -hmm. Why can't I hug somebody? My, that might not, I might not have that kind of dirt and that kind of odor on me. But Christians have dirt and odor on them, too. Mm -hmm. And we need to constantly be washed and, re and cleansed by God. So we've got to be very careful how we treat people as they come into our circle of Christianity, okay? Okay, it says, I welcome, aggressively receive. It's not a mild thing. I search this person out to make sure I make them feel welcome. And we have that reputation here. People tell us that mm -hmm. uh, when they come, yeah. all right? S with strong personal interest. Personal interest in I'm the I'm interested person. in you. In the person, yes. As a person, mm -hmm. that's the definition of accept. Yes. The Lord accepts and sustains all of us, yes. both the mature and the immature believers, mm -hmm. both the weak and the strong. Therefore, all believers should be accepting of one another. Yes. That word accept is really something we need to think about. Yes. It's just it is important to note that the apostle is not dealing with issues of sin. Yes. That are condemned in the scriptures, but he's dealing with what we call matters of conscience. Yes. Matters of conscience that are neither condemned nor condoned in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Things neither commanded nor forbidden in the, the, word, the word of, of God. God. Wow. All right. Minister. Yes. I would like for you to take up the next part of the discussion. Okay. All right. The subject of food was a matter of disagreement and dispute. Mature believers from different backgrounds understood that they were free to eat whatever they desired. Right. Some recent Jewish converts, though, mm -hmm. felt a need to continue their adherence to Jewish dietary laws. Wow. Yes. Okay. True. Some new converts that were, were former pagan worshipers and had observed animal sacrifices felt that meat offered to idols was contaminated and wrong for them to eat or to keep eating. May I come in upon that point? <laughs> yes. Okay. During this time, the pagan sacrifices would do, pagan religions would do animal sacrifices. Mm -hmm. It was similar to what happened in Judaism in that they would cut the throat of the animal and then bleed the animal Blood out drink. and mm -hmm. roast the animal on the fire or whatever, or just kill the animal. And then afterward, that meat would be sold. They didn't throw that meat away. Mm -hmm. They took that meat to the local butcher shop mm -hmm. and sold that meat, which then dressed that meat and took it to market. Mm 
Mm -hmm. These former pagans that knew that meat had been used in an idol sacrifice thought that meat was contaminated. That wasn't true. Mm -hmm. But they had a problem with meat that they know had been offered to an idol. Right. I just wanted to give a little background on what it was meant by eating meat offered to idols. Yes, and, and you know that's so important. We will probably cover in part two, but um, culture. Yes. Culture has a big influence. Yes. Uh, yes. on the way we live yes. and what we are going to encounter right even as Christians so as a Christian you come into the sh church but you are not sheltered from everything no no you're not and you are going to come into contact with people who are not sheltered and have not uh, gotten beyond their beliefs about such things as meat that was offered to idols yes you see, absolutely, or rituals that their family followed. Right. You know, what do we do about that then? Right. So, that, Amen. that may come up. Fantastic. <laughs> As Christians, okay. The admonition of Paul was that none of these members were to be criticized, right? But rather embraced with love, kindness, compassion, and under. Standing. Yes. And I really just need to stop again. Okay. Pastor. Go ahead. I need to speak to the word criticize. Yes. Because when I was studying this, I meditated upon the fact that many of us come from families who are highly critical. True. And that is what we heard. Almost sounds natural to right. be critical. Right. But now that you are Christian, you cannot be critical like your family was. Right. You have to know what it is and call it what it is. Wow. We are even called to forgiveness. You can't criticize somebody and then ignore the fact that God says you're supposed to pray for them even if they offended you. Yes. You see, but we come from these families of origins where that is what they did. Maybe your family was highly educated. Maybe they were authoritarian. Yes. So they are always seeing what's wrong. Yes. And the bad. Right. And correcting. Right. But that is not always, that's not most of the time welcoming. Right. It's and, not and soothing. And timing is very important also. Timing we, is very it, important. It's not going to harm anything. Mm -hmm. Even if that young lady I used in the illustration earlier comes to yes. church and if she refuses the scarf on her knees, right. leave her alone. Right. She may not want Talk that. Talk to her after and say, let me tell you why we did it. We love you. But girl, you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we just was hoping that the men didn't watch you instead of watching the preacher. Yeah. I mean, yeah. make her funny. But, but, but don't run her away and lovingly and invite her back. I guarantee you when she comes back, she probably would wear something different. Yeah. But she should encounter love regardless to whether she understood what you were trying to do or not. Exactly. She has, should encounter a loving spirit, and, and male or female. Right. We, Him, we, same thing. We, we are not. Uh, Picking you know, on ladies. No, we, we're not. Okay. We're not. I mean, because men, they may come to church. They may have alcohol on their breath. It's they, happened. They may have the cigarette in their hand it's when happened. they walk up to the door. It happens. And we, we know they can't come in, but we got to be careful about how we approach them. Right. And that may take some training. Yes, it does. That might take some rethinking. Right. And some training, somebody that's been in the world maybe longer than you. Right. <laughs> longer than me. Yes. Right? Yes. And got to think, well, what would Jesus do? Right. We always want to say, what would Jesus do to have these uh, things on the car, braces, WWJD, what would Jesus do? What did Jesus do? He welcomed everybody. He let people touch him that they didn't think should touch him. Mm -hmm. He ate with people they didn't think he should have eaten with. Mm -hmm. They accused him of being a drunk because he hung out with people who drank. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so we gotta really just be careful. And next, the next se segment of this lesson deals with self-righteousness. And self-righteousness is one of the ugliest things that exist in Christianity. We'll deal with it next time. Yes. Minister, I'm sorry to, to be stepping all over your no, 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 uh, process no. It's, here. It's, it's a discussion, it's Bible study. Okay, thank Bible you. Bible discussion. Thank you for that. In these types of matters, a thought to keep in mind is that all believers huh. are God's servants and are not accountable to us. Wow. 
God will make everyone stand. Yes. Only he is qualified and has the authority. Yes. To yes. judge those who belong to Christ. God is the only righteous judge. He's the only righteous judge. Our judgment judge. can be a little unrighteous. Yeah, like you say, self-righteousness. Self-righteousness makes us think we, we are qualified to judge other people. And uh, we just got to really be careful with that. Minister, here's a scripture. The preacher is talking. Uh, uh, may I read the scripture? Oh, certainly. Please uh, read. Oh, okay, Paul, the preacher, is talking here. Yes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, mm. uh, verses 3 through 5, he says, now, uh, so listen to Paul's attitude. And, now, you can't get too cocky with this, but I kind of like it. So bear with me. Don't let me get carried away here. Okay. Paul says, I care very little if I'm judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear. In other words, I've done what's right. I really don't care what you're thinking mm -hmm. or what you're feeling or what you're saying. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. All I did was what I thought was right. Mm -hmm. Watch this. It is the Lord who judges me. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. People don't know the heart. We see people's actions, but we don't know their motives, and we don't know their heart. Sometimes people are doing right actions with the wrong heart. Right. Sometimes people are doing wrong actions with the right heart. Did I skip something? Oh, verse 5, minister. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he says, judge nothing before the appointed time. Mm. God will judge. Wait until the Lord comes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when do we judge? Right after Jesus get through. <laughs> so hold until then. Hold it until then. Remember that. Don't judge until Jesus has judged. And then what you do then, you just say, Lord, you're right. Can't go wrong with that one. <laughs> <laughs> he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and expose mm -hmm. the motives of the heart. Yes. And I was saying, we don't know people's hearts. Mm -hmm. We just see people's actions. There are people with wrong actions with right hearts mm -hmm. that just have, haven't gotten it together yet. There are people with right actions and their hearts are wrong. Right. So we don't know what's going on on the inside of a person. So we've got to be careful judging. God is approving of blessing sometimes people that we're criticizing. Mm -hmm. Okay. At that time, speaking of he when Christ brings everything to light, at that time each will receive their praise from God. Mm -hmm. So, Minister, would you read the summation? Sure. Okay. Sure. There is a natural tendency to judge. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. What did you say? It's a natural tendency. Natural. It's, it's a part of our human, human condition. Human nature. Human nature. That's better. Yes. It's a part of human nature to be judgmental of people and things sometimes. Yeah. You can watch children. Wow. You, you never even taught them the word judge. And they know how they'll, <laughs> the, even the little ones, it's funny to us, but sometimes the little ones will judge us. <laughs> you sh you should have done that. What did you do that for, Mommy? Wow. So they come here judging. <laughs> it's natural. We got to work on that with the human. kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the grandkids. <laughs> and, and what's so funny, every now and then they and might they be right. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, minister. I'm sorry I interrupted you, but that That's tendency okay. is natural. Tendency. tendency. It's a natural tendency in human beings to judge other people. Yeah. So we gotta fight nature. Yes. And be spiritual. Yes. Okay. And we have to go. We All have right. to. You know, that's why prayer is so important. We have to pray every day, every night. We have to pray continually. That's why the Bible says pray without ceasing. Yeah. Because you don't know. I don't know. Yes. What's in my own heart? Ooh. I believe my heart is right. I believe Wait. that I'm genuine in my intentions and my motives. That doesn't mean, like Paul said, doesn't mean I'm innocent. Wait, wait, time out now. Wait a minute. You said something kind of, uh, yeah. somebody out there is going to disagree. So That's I need okay. to validate that point you just made because some things you just can't say without giving them the scripture, Mr. Glenn. Okay. <laughs> you said you don't even know what's in your own heart. Right. So well, what about people? I know myself. Let me tell you about me. Mm -hmm. But they think, and people really think they know their heart, but you know what? 
Jeremiah 17, 9 says they're wrong. Yeah. Jeremiah the 17, 9. Deceitful. The heart is deceitful. Your heart can fool you. Desperately. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The heart is deceitful yes. above all things. Yes. And wow. the next rate is hard to say. You say it. And what? The heart is what? Desperately what? Desperately. Yeah. Intently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, come on with those adjectives. Wicked. Desperately wicked. The heart of mankind, humankind, mm -hmm. is seriously wicked. Only God can fix that. It has a tendency to do what God doesn't like. The heart is deceitful. Is, the heart is yes. deceitful, deceitful above, above all else and desperately wicked. Then the, the, uh, God, through the prophet says, through the Jeremiah says, who can know it? God. And then he goes on, I think, in verse, in verse 10 of Jeremiah 17, to say, I, God, I try the heart. Mm -hmm. So we have to ask God. And that's why you hear people pray, and they are right. Lord, search my heart. Please. Yes. Search me, Lord. David. If you find anything should that not shouldn't be. be there, take it out. I remember the most saints praying like that in the sanctified church. Mm -hmm. Take it out. Mm -hmm. That's our deliberate prayer we should pray. Yes. And that reminds me to pray that prayer. Lord, I think I'm right toward people. But if my heart is not right, because the heart has a tendency to deceive us, right. take out what's not right in my heart, creating us a clean heart, and renewing us right. a right spirit right. so that we don't wrongly judge others. I'm sorry, Minister, I just had to say no, something like okay. that. it's okay. You know, there was a cleansing agent in the Old Testament times, uh -huh. and it was called hyssop. 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 A cleansing agent. And mm. the king, yes. David, yes. he said, purge me. Yes. With, with, with hyssop. Take the cleansing agent. Take, to get the antiseptic, as we're talking about that <laughs> these days yes, under, yes. under the current yes, yes, pandemic. Yes, yes, yes. Get the antiseptic, Lord. And clean my life up. Get the bacteria, the strongest one. Get the virus of sin. Wow. Out of my life. You know? Wow. Heavy stuff. I should be so committed. We should be so committed. We must commit now prayer. to be committed. That's what these studies are about. Minister, I'm not letting you finish this little small paragraph. <laughs> yes, you are. That's okay. Come but, on. Okay. So where was that? Okay. It's a natural tendency that we have yes. to judge. Yes. That exists within, within us, us. The carnal man. Wow. Within us. Within us. Even as when we're trying to be spiritual, we still could be weak in areas of judging. Mm. So we have to ask the Lord to show us with a sincere heart. Yes. And I promise you, he will show you if you want to be shown. Yes. You see. But the spiritual man who has a renewed nature, we're new creatures in, in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Brand new. Yes. Is accepting and loving rather than. Rather judgmental. Thank you, Minister. Well said. Who knew we could get all that out of that little three-line paragraph? So thank you. <laughs> you In our closing remarks, what do you want to say? Thank him. Oh, I think it's been said. <laughs> we have to pray. We need to be humble in order to be patient. Those are virtues that will help us to be accepting. Yes. Those are virtues that will help us to be loving, to be patient in our homes, yes. with our families, yes. and even outside of our homes. It, it can be challenging. Thank you, Minister. We thank you for joining us tonight for this presentation of The Biblical Perspective. We hope you'll be with us next time when we will discuss part B of judging other believers. Have a blessed week. Have a blessed week. Emmanuel Community Church is located at 12607 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Hawthorne, California. You can find all of our messages on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click subscribe and thanks for watching. Be blessed for God is with us.